got God's presence, you have freedom of peace, you have a gospel of peace, you have words of reconciliation, you have a ministry of reconciliation. Can you see the Father's house, the front door, give it to enormous front door. Only thing you have to open in one at a time. You see. You have to open it one at a time. You see. You have to open it one at a time. You see. No angels, human beings, open the Father's door. It's not the ministry of angels. When you begin to open, angels will arrange circumstances. Father, you have a good plan for this man's life. You are speaking to his eyes. Holy Spirit, now the second thing, Holy Spirit, I rebuke all darkness that has been around him, blinding his eyes. You may be praying for your sister. You may be praying for your husband. You may be praying for your cousin, son, or name, boss, whoever. In the name of Jesus, special message. I think of the dark waves and I bring light to the spirit. Middle finger. I bring light into this person's heart's eyes. In the name of Jesus, special message. Let this light increase in Jesus' name. Let this light increase. Your head is on the front door and of God's house. You are the voice of Jesus. You are the feet of Jesus. You are the heartbeat of Jesus. Angels can't open the front door. It's a business done by the blood of Jesus Christ. And only we are privy to that business. Because we have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. We can introduce the saving blood of Jesus Christ. The ransom. Jesus the Prince, Jesus who paid the cross. This is the Father's great desire. This is the Father's good pleasure when we involve ourselves in opening the front door of the Father's house into the parlor of forgiveness. That's the end of this. All the sins are forgiven. That's only the beginning, that's not the end. But you will not have an end unless you begin this Unless you give mercy. Give forgiveness, speak forgiveness, let light shine in finger, full finger. Lord Jesus, we are praying that at a time, a place, and a person will reach my brother and speak to him and be Jesus. And the little finger of the Holy Spirit, you see Holy Spirit, you are praying for someone. Holy Spirit, you see how many of you remember the day you became a father? First time, how many of you remember the day? Were you waiting anxiously at the labor room? You were. I was working in the chill house. I worked in the hospital that morning and my wife was admitted to the hospital for labor pains. I had to do the afternoon shift and I walked on. You know what I did? I came home. Because the night before so I had a promising myself I'm going back to the hospital soon. I fell asleep. Hospital because it was just first hour. She had just got the ambulance. Hospital was about five minutes distance from our home in Chicago. I had fallen asleep. Hospital ambulance came home and man was shouting, knocking on the door. Sir, sir, no matter, Baba, I'm going now. Sir, sir. I woke up, got ready, got to the ambulance, thank God. Just before tea came, I was there. It was the director, it's been really interesting one of the hard day the day which I was born. You remember the day? Everybody remembers the day, fathers remember the day. Remember? Joy, joy. Same joy and more Heavenly Father has when you do this, open the front, go through the book tanks of someone dear to you, near to you, coming to Christ. There are book tanks. You bear the pain of you share the heart of Jesus that this person must come to Christ. And when it happens, there's a great rejoicing in heaven. Scripture, Father rejoices. He stopped the on mass, earth, velocity, and all that, and he 
he rejoices for one sinner's sake into his heart. He rejoices. Scripture. God rejoices, heaven rejoices, angels rejoices, one sinner in three God's heart. Scripture. Luke 15 is one at, at one sinner rejoices, heaven rejoices. Story of the prodigal son, story of the lost sheep, story of the woman who lost the coin. Opening the front door of God's house. That's for me. When you say to Lord Jesus, I want to open the front door of God's house. Angels come to us. And for those who know, those who I know, only I can do this. Make this is the Father's good pleasure. Let the Father's good pleasure come into my heart today. Let the Father's good pleasure come into your children's heart. To be a spiritual parent, to birth someone in Christ, and to nurture someone, so that when we go to heaven, we will not have we will not have to say, "Must I go and empty hand? Must I meet my Savior's soul?" Lord, I pray for every one of your precious people. This joy will grip their heart, desire will grip their heart, as they know the joy they had when a son was born, when a daughter was born, when another was born. And some would say we would like to have even more. That they will give you the Father in heaven who lost his son for a critical night, day, and a night in Hades to be given. That we will make this effort. The good pleasure of the Father will come into each one present. In Jesus' name, open the front door of the Father's house. Let me read the passage from the message. You call out to God for help when He helps. He's a good Father, that way. Don't forget, He also is a responsible Father. And won't let, and won't let you get by with sloppy living. Your life is a journey you must travel with deep consciousness of God. It costs God plenty to get you out of the dead end, empty headed life you grew up with. Now, this is not my life, it is the message by the way. It's a new Bible that says it as it is in contemporary English. He paid with Christ's sacred blood. You know, he died like an unblemished, sacrificial blood. Three characteristics of the Father that I want you to take into your heart. Father forgives. So Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them. But they do not know what they do. So Father, are you a forgiving Father in your home? What do your children think about you? You take the stick and say, oh, oh, have you in your obedience? Do you threaten a child with the stick? What does your child remember? One who is introduced all, all the time brings the past back. That day also I told you. This time also you are 19 in the class. Next time if you come 19, or next time you do this, are you father bring a child's past? You will say, forgive me. Never bring a child's past. No child in you quoting a child's past, okay? No child in yours. Last error is no incentive for future better living. No incentive. Moment you remind the child of the past error, child gets a fast to the air. He hears the revelation. He says, if my father remembers me so bad, might I say I be there? Might I say I prove the case? Okay? So you are you are saying in your mind. I will not recall to my children they are past error. It has no place in correction. It has no place in future improvement. Recollection of past error improves no one. Say this with me. Recollection of past error improves no one. How does God correct us? Joy set before. Say, Joy set before. 
How does God forgive and correct? Joy. Hebrews 12 to Job said before. So you sent for a child, the prophet, the benefit, the blessing of obedience. Father forgives, Father forgives. Forgives them, forgives. Forgiveness itself is corrective. Say it again. Forgiveness is corrective. You believe when you forgive, child is correct. Child is the one that was child becomes better. When you better, mention the past error and promise future retribution. If you do this the next time, child will be the next Because you have this faith. Words have power. You are taking a child. When you do this the next time, if you so we are learning forgiveness Lawrence. So we have come to the Father's Father. So my little message has two sides. How you treat God's family. Is it the way God treats His family? How you treat your family. Is it the way God treats your family? God is we are asking our new pleasure to come to us. The Father's ways to come to us. That there will be a deep, deep desire in our hearts to lead our own children early in life into salvation, into a saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And for someone connected to our life, we be the only one that person knows who knows Jesus Christ. That we will be a door. Can you see this vision? I'm seeing this vision continually. Now, as I have been preaching for the past, I think we will see this front door with a nice this is the front of God's house of salvation. Who can open it? The saved ones, redeemed ones, not angels, you. Not angels, you and me. Not angels, you and me. Can you see this in the Father's house? Will you open the door to someone? Father forgives. Secondly, Father is pregnant. And as you continue in this Father's house, in this passage, Every door in my father's house are many, many rooms. Every door has only this caution, reverence. Every door. What is the license to enter? Reverence. What is the license to enter? Reverence. How much of God would be in this house? The measure of God that is in you. How God is infinite. Agree? All of God, if He is here, every sickness will be healed. If all of God is here, every sickness will be healed. The fact that every sickness is not healed proves us all of God is not John 3 30. Jesus has the Spirit without mission. We have the Spirit. Does anyone have a glass of water? Water or water? It will be okay. Every house of God has God permission. Agree? Agree? It's not all of God. Every service, we like to say it's all of God. But it's we who are doing it. So every service may be 10% God, 90% man. Every service may be 20% God, 80% man. Something happens, isn't it? 10% God is powerful. Sad thing is 90% man. Every service of God may be 30% man, 70% God. 40% man, 60% man. We really my message today, you can do a feedback and say how much of God, how much of man. Don't be euphemistic, nobody is 100% God, only Jesus Christ was. Agreed? Agreed? Only Jesus Christ was. We desire to see the day when our services are 70% God, 30% man. And if it's possible, all of them. I don't think it's possible this side. But we need to get there. 
more of God, less of man. All ministries begin less of man.